Clutch made, bitch. Clutch mode. Super Clutch Podcast. I got my guy Sinji in here, man. What's up, man? I appreciate you having me, man. I'm excited. I appreciate it. So tell them about your podcast, man. Yeah, what's up, guys? The Queen City Odyssey. Basically what we do, man, we go and we help create content for local artists, musicians, entrepreneurs, artists, and everything you can think of, man. Basically just trying to help the city acknowledge the talent that's in the city. Man, so can you touch on some of the people we've you um you ran into like some of the people you interviewed. Yeah, man. So I've worked with a lot of dope people. One of uh, I've worked with Vegas. I've worked with Cash Row. I've worked with E the Prophet. I worked with Soul Serum lately. That was really cool. I've worked with Chinks, DJ Chinks. I've worked with SMO. Man, I've worked with basically everybody almost that I wanted to in the city. There's still a bunch of people I want to work with. And it's all been dope. Tony Manson, can't forget him. That I love was a, him, man. That was an interesting time, bro. I had a great time. Can I tell you a story about Tony yeah, Manson? Yeah, so, go ahead. Um, this was the beginning of this year, I believe. I had a show at the Mock B. Okay. It was me, my boy Lizard, Alexander. I think we all was on the ticket. Yeah, right? I had Alexander on too, yeah. Yeah, that's my brother. So um, we all freestyling or whatever. We in the, on the stage just freestyling and kicking shit like then some white boy walk up. You feel me? Not to be on no race shit. <laughs> no, no. This, and he had got all the dark clothing on and everything too. I know exactly how he pulled got up. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? So he walk up. He jump in the freestyle. Like I'm like, okay, and he talking <laughs> some shit. Like I'm like, oh, okay. Like that whole show. Like I, that, I fuck with bro. Like you feel me? Yeah, bro. He talking with him too. He definitely surprised me. Not that like I went in with intentions or anything but he definitely was one that i sat down and i feel like once you really listen to the way he talks and like his life and stuff like that music is that's him bro like it's crazy just how much like in tune he is with who he is and how to like make his music and stuff that's the thing too man i've worked working with artists you just see like how much love they have for it and just how much effort and work they like to put into shit and that's what's really been inspirational for real bro yeah I don't been in the, in the studio sometimes with a lot of artists, like just some underground artists, like and just see the difference of creativity. Yeah. And, like just seeing, like I ain't even getting the studio with Tony, but like how you said, like he just come with a whole different package that you wouldn't expect. You know yeah, bro, I mean? and especially cool that I think that in Cincinnati, especially right now, dude, that the artist range is so spread out and crazy that like you can go in a studio literally one hour in here like Detroit beats and stuff like that. Then you can go to a studio and hear just like bluegrass stuff, bro. And it's just wild how much talent that is just dispersed in the city and man, how they reaching it and I shit. I love the Midwest. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah, bro. Everybody's sleeping on Cincy, bro. Every one of y'all watching, you guys don't sleep on it. It's that. all good. It's gonna come to us last. We gonna, yeah, bro. we gonna get the music scene last. Everybody else got their turn. I had to do the mathematics. You feel mm, me? Oh, I like that. I like you. You broke it down. Yeah, it was New York first. You feel yeah. me? Then it went, went to Cali. West. Yeah. Then now it went, it went south. south. It so. went from Texas to Atlanta mm. to all that, all the reach, Florida's, the Louisiana's out there. Yeah. It. It's gonna come back to me. It's moving up. Chicago now, blowing up. Mm-hmm. Detroit's Chicago, on its way. Chicago. Oh, I too. count them. They been on. Yeah. You Detroit can count. too. I feel like Detroit's becoming bigger mainstream now, though. I feel mm-hmm. coming from, and then I feel like that's just gonna feed into it too, because all the artists in the Midwest for real know each other. Like once you like talk to them and you're like, "Yo, have you heard of him? Him?" They're like, "Yeah." Like it's really crazy, like just how they've worked all together, or like they know about each other. So yeah. I think Do it's you smoke? Up. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got to ask you, man. So you got a radio station and everything like that, man. So how did that come about? Man, so I basically just, just I don't know, I was chilling one day, just thinking of like I was kind of like, it was this real deal. Like I was just chilling in my van or whatever. I think I was making a song or something on the computer and I was just like, I need something new. Like I need some new energy. Mm -hmm. Like you feel me? And I was like, man, let me look up the radio stations, you feel me? And I did my research, found that radio station. And it was really, it was it was easy to, to get my way into there, mm -hmm. but like the process was the longest thing because I waited like two months just for a phone call and then like another month just to get my show. Like it was really? crazy, yeah. So I'm thinking it wasn't even going to happen, but I like to say that probably was just the grace of God for real because I was just right there putting out everything mm -hmm. that was going on. And yeah. when I spoke that, like, it, something came immediately from it. I mean, not immediately, you know, it took mm -hmm. some longevity. But the but. idea came, bro. So, like, when you're doing that, man, how do you kind of go about placing the music onto it? Like, how do you decide what songs you want to do? Really? I, I mean, I'll be listening to music, like, every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I might... One day I might be listening to 70s, like, you know what I mean? Another day I might just be listening to new age hip hop or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, whatever. And then, um, just from experiences of what I've been through, what I've been around, and what I'm hearing that week, I'm putting it on the radio. And um, for, as far as the artists, I just really was finding artists who had some clean music. Because mm -hmm. one thing I need to say this on here don't nobody got clean music. And, mm -hmm. like, say, like, the Migos, say if they drop, they gonna drop an album. It might all be explicit, but they're going to drop another album and it's all clean. clean. You yeah. feel me? Like, I think we need to put that message out there. You feel me? Because don't nobody got clean music. I, I would have, at, at one point, I would have played whoever I came across if they yeah. had clean music. But See, and I that's the thing that. I've been talking with artists about is that, like, especially now with, like, hip-hop is growing and stuff, but it's like having certain, like, drill beats you're only going to get really played on. A handful of stations, and like there ain't nothing wrong with using it that. Get played on about, Cincy Local, I ain't gonna lie. You feel but me? But like having that ability to kind of change up like the beat and like the lyrics and stuff like that matters in terms of getting the views. Because let's be real, a lot of people aren't gonna listen to straight hip hop just because they don't like it anyway. Right. But if you're able to present your music and not even saying you gotta change it completely, but just in the ten percent way, in a way it tastes better. You know, I was just. I was saying on my interview with Ivor at the radio station, like I was watching Buster Rhymes. Mm -hmm. He was talking about like when people don't like the medicine, you know what I mean, what you do, you know what I mean, with the taste of the medicine, oh, we're going to put some apple sauce in it, you feel yeah. me, we're going to do that, you got to switch it up, you know what I yeah, mean, you got deliver to. it a different way if you're going to do it the same way. Yeah, bro, because especially too, it's like coming from a city that doesn't really get the publicity it's, you're not helping yourselves, limiting yourselves to only certain stations. Yeah. And I don't know, especially you when you're not hurting yourself, limiting it. yourself to certain, just, just anything, mm -hmm. not even to put a certain on it. When you limit yourself, you know what I mean, you, you, you're messing up because you could really be maximizing. You know what I mean? So. so how have you maximized that? So talk about how you've taken your opportunities and your ch chances to maximize your opportunities. So it just started with the music for real. Um, See, I'm 27, so I feel like I was about 22, 23 when I first made a song. Mm -hmm. And it was with my older brother. And um, he had went to college. He had everything. We took everything with him in the studio. So I had to get an interface. I knew, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I knew what I had to get. Once I got all that, then it was boom. Oh, I got to learn the software. I got to learn Pro Tools. Boom. What was your first software? It was Pro Tools. Pro Tools? Yeah, I mean, that's when I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But um, learning Pro Tools, boom. Then... I got some trouble, whatever, but my mama had called me, hit me with some game, like, told me I ain't maximizing, basically, yeah. and she told me to go to school, went to school, got my education right on what to do in the Pro Tools mm. and Adobe and Photoshop, all that, you know what I mean? And then, after I got the knowledge, I started investing in most stuff, you know what I mean? I invested in cam a camera, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Through the grace of my grandma, she got it off the... Uh, Home shopping network or something like that. You <laughs> Love know. that. But um, yeah. Then it's just it's now that's where I'm really at now investing mm -hmm. in the equipment. So that's how I maximize. And I was just telling my little brother on the phone like, 
Um, I might not be where I'm at right now, but about when I'm 30, oh yeah, I'm gonna be great because I you know, invested everything yeah. I need to invest. The you foundation, I mean? you're building that foundation. Mm-hmm. That's why I thank you for coming and be a part of the podcast. Of course, man. I appreciate you having me for real. You feel appreciate me? Appreciate it, man. So, who's been your favorite artist to work with? Um, my favorite artist, I, I can't, it's a lot. I really can't put it in one mm. in the city. Shit, yeah. City and then just overall. So, like, my favorite artist to work with was Lil B. I mm. got him on the song. Like, that was my favorite because I never would have expected that. Even, like, yeah. in high school, I wasn't really listening to Lil B and now my people's was. So, like, mm. that was a exciting one. But in the city, I mean, Alexander, the, you feel me? Girl Next Door. Um, Girl Next Door. Um, My boy Lizard. I'm trying to think. Sir Quest. Dash, um, man, who I got a song with? I don't know, but yeah, and my brother Chav, you know what I mean? Cause he been rapping since high school and he don't really be putting his music out there like that. Mm. You know, he got his own plan or whatever, but that, you know what I mean? To have a song with my brother, you feel me? Who yeah. been doing this before me, that, that was more accomplishing than anything. So that's who I could say right now. I want to work with a lot of people in the city, but you know, we still trying to break that wall, you mm-hmm. feel me, so. Tell me a little bit about you, though, like, you know what I mean, your upbringing, you know. Yeah, so uh, I'm from the east side of Cincinnati. I'm from Mount Washington. Uh, Turn up. Yeah, basically, man, I went to Clark Montessori High School, then uh, now I go to UC. I'm a sports admin major, but that really wasn't. That wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, huh? it wasn't part, man. I chose to do the easy route. Don't do that, y'all. If y'all, any of y'all before college, don't do the easy route. But, I mean, it was cool, though. I think me doing that, though, set me on this path just because my interest was gauged in other things. So it made me put in. And then, yeah, bro, basically, man, i just been doing this for about a year or so. I'm trying to just support the city. I'm trying to be not necessarily Cole Bennett, but someone of that echelon of just like helping people in their city because i mean real talk cole bennett has put a couple of them artists on not lyrically but his videos now when you look at it like if you're from chicago you want that's the cole I, bennett video that's what i recognize that's what was crazy about like cole bennett because yeah. like you'll see his name first and then you'll see the artist and the video be crazy yeah like. and it's like you know what i mean like if you're from chicago now like he's worked with polo g little dirt He's worked with everybody there, basically, coming up. R.I.P. King Vaughn. Yeah, R.I.P. King Vaughn. He's working with Kid Lori now, bringing Kid Lori up. Kid Lori's blowing up, and it's like, I basically kind of want to be that, not even just for artists, but for anybody in the city, entrepreneurially, anything, and just kind of be the guy where eventually it's like, yo, we're on the Queen City Odyssey podcast. Like, that's huge, bro. Like, that's going to help us, and that's basically what I'm trying to get to, man. And we got time, though, and I love the journey. The journey's fun, man. It's been great. Yeah. Me and people like you just sitting down, bro, and just realizing just, man, like, everybody's just chill, bro. It's just, like, it's going to come, and once it comes, I'm hopefully putting myself in the position to be there for it. You feel me? Be ready for that change. You feel me? Yeah, definitely bro. feel that, man. And I, I commend you on that because I'm definitely trying to do that, too, you know, whether it's just I really want to, like, my main thing, I was saying it on my interview on Tuesday was, um, like my whole high school, I went to Withrow. So yeah. like, we everybody from when I graduated down there make music, mm-hmm. but don't nobody work together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that kind of be blowing me a little bit, but on the on the macro aspect, just everybody. Period. You know what I mean? This really supposed to be working with each other. Yeah. It's supposed to be turned up. You know what I mean? And just for you making waves for others, you know what I mean? I feel you on the same level, like, because, man, I know how it get. People don't even believe you have to turn. Yeah, bro, like, and, like, that's cool, bro, and, like, sometimes I get it, bro. Like, people, like, you got scammers out there, bro, who be man, charging people money and then not getting the results. They done tried to get me. I ain't, I ain't yeah, lying. Bro. They done tried to get me. But, I mean, at the end of the day, bro, I see it's that nobody nobody just blows up from their city without support from their city it's just not possible bro so it's like without support period it ain't no way you blowing out without no support yeah bro it's just like you ain't gonna do it on your own man and i don't know especially like for coming from the back scheme of songs like from the engineering perspective it's crazy you got rocco it's fucking had belly and all fucking doing that you have chinks who's done jack case who's been blowing up right now 
Got to give them a shout out, of course. Man, then you got shout out Philly G. Philly, I was about to bring Philly G up, bro. You got uh, Trusky too, bro. You got hella just hard, just overall people, man. That Ivy Joe, man, girl next door. They producing their own beats and everything. Um, my boy Lizard. Lizard playing the guitar. You got to get him on, man. He in the mountains right now. Yeah, though. he in Colorado. I yeah. talked to him. <laughs> Shout out J-Pat, too, man. J-Pat, crazy beast. I got to give him, bro. He works up. He's from uh, Middletown, bro. He works with Kenneth Cray, Sue, Easy Boy. They're up next, bro. They're up. They're up next. Shout out. You feel me, man? So, yeah, um... Man, um, I just want to say, like, what guys, what started your journey then? Bro, for real, it was just like, I try to make beats. I was like, yo, I was just watching videos of just like people interviewing people. And I was like, man, I'm gonna try to make some beats and like do that. I tried FL Studio, gave it like a month and a half. I was like, bro, I just, I don't think this is for me. So I was like, fuck it, man. If people like Adam22 can be famous, I was like, bro, I can fucking do that. Like, and just basically, I was like, I think that's a really cool aspect of it. It's just like working with people and just like the artists and just like, having people who want to just, like, come onto the show and basically be, like, the morning show or, like, Sway or something like that yeah. and shit like that. And then, basically, I did my first real interview with Jesse Michael, Free Jesse Michael, basically. Free and that man, the free Kodak Black. Basically, that kind of put me in where I was like, yo, like, this dude's pretty popular in, like, the city. Like, Jesse Michael is pretty good. Like, I like his music. And he worked with me, bro, and he was dope. And I was like, yo, like, this is what I want, bro. Like, I want to just be around artists. Like, I want to just be in the background of, like, the dude who just goes and does all the videos and shit for artists. Like, I just think that's a cool perspective, and that's a cool life. And at the end of the day, bro, really, I, I didn't even – I do these for free for the artists and shit, bro, just because it's, like – at the end of the day, bro, like, yeah, I could get paid, bro, but it's like, I'd rather get my name out and have people know, like, they can trust me with their content, they can trust me with their releases, that I'm not going to leak nothing, man. And that's what's been dope, is that artists have trusted me with music they haven't even released, and they probably won't release, and, like, I just think that's been really dope to experience, like, the whole behind, like, yo, like, check this song out for me, and then never hearing it out in public type Thanks. shit. No, nah, hey, boy, we, I got. I'm about to drop this album, man. So um, we gonna have to do another Bet. podcast. With Bet. That. I'm down for that, man. And making content too, bro. And it's just dope, cause at the end of the day, bro, like it, we're taking the. Lo I'm taking the Jeff Bezos approach, bro. At the beginning of Amazon, bro, Jeff Bezos didn't worry about accumulating money, bro. He was just expanding the footprint, expanding the footprint. That's what we're trying to do, man. I worked with Travis Kendrick, Mary, or uh, Marianne, Alabama he's going to be our first episode of season four, man. And just kind of expanding that network. And four just, seasons, man. What's that like? What's that ground like? Bro, it's cool, man. And really, I did the first season, and then I was just kind of like fucking around. Then my second and third season, bro, I knocked out in probably six months. Just grinding, bro, and just hitting people up. Just being like, yo, man, like, I fuck with your shit. Like, let's do an interview. And then the artist just being like, bet. And it's a dope connection, man. Gotta shout out YB Marco, too, man. YB Marco's got an album Turn coming out. Up. It's gonna be fire. You said YB Marco? Yes, bro. That's my boy. Is I it, went out with Marco one do night, bro. Got the start, do he got the dress? Yeah, I don't know if he's got him no more, but yeah, he used to have the little dress on top. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about the same one, but... <laughs> he went to Thomas More. He played football? No, nah, I don't know. Ah. No, nah, we probably ain't talking about the same one. But shout that's out to YB Marco, though. Yeah, bro. I mean, that's basically my journey, bro. I just kind of started out just wanting to work with artists and worked with Jesse Michael and just fell in love with just working with people and shit. And then Chris Wise, I went to a mock beat show he threw. He let me just come in and do video too. I mean, get their early set up and shit. And I was just like, yeah, bro, like, this is it for me. Like, yeah, shout out Chris Wise. He, man, gave me a lot of show opportunities for show. You feel me? Chris Wise puts on, bro, especially what he does at the mock beat, bro. He throws a variety of artists on, bro. And, he puts on for the city. Man, boy, Kobe at a bad mofo, boy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but we gonna all uh, get up off of all this, this, you know, this, this memory lane, and let's say, like, let's say, um, let's talk about politics. Did you vote? Yeah, I vote. Of course, I voted. So how I you voted feel? early. You did. I voted early. I voted like three weeks early. Oh yeah, you're a legend. I, yeah, I, I was the one day of them. Nah, there ain't no problem, bro. As long as you vote, there ain't yeah. no issue with it. 
So, like, how you feel about politics this year? Like, what, Oh, bro, I mean, I'm not trying to be that dude, but, like, I'm pretty in the know. Like, I do a lot of, like, research. Like, I'm, like, one of them weird dudes where, like, I'm into, like, financial markets and, like, shit like that. So, like, I have to pay attention to politics. You wake up and watch the, uh, what's that shit called? Like, MSNBC and shit and, like, the more, yeah, bro, because, like, I got to yeah. know that shit because, like, motherfucking politics fuck up the economy and that's all connected so i mean i hate donald trump i'll be real donald trump i hate that dude bro and that is what it is bro he's I just out feel like he a gangster that's all bro he's just a dude to me bro that's just like i think that he is a personification of the saying that if you're never told no you won't know how to take it yeah. and it's just like if you support him, bro, I'm not going to hate you for supporting him, but you got to truly have reasons that aren't Man, yeah, facts. not real reasons and actually have research, bro. Like, don't yeah. pull no One American <laughs> Network on me. Don't pull Fox News he podcast. He did have fans, though, before he was Yeah, bro, president. and it's just like the thing with him is that he became president because he spoke to basically uneducated white people who didn't understand that those issues they're having are because of the same senators that they put. Like Mitch McConnell, once again, real quick, will be <laughs> going for 36 years in Kentucky. What you mean? He's, he's, he's 36 been, years? He's been 36 years in the Senate. And basically, they have Hold been on. the bottom five. Hold on. And, yeah. 36? Yeah, 36. He's won re-election. How old is six, Mitch he's like 74, bro. Like, that man's old. <laughs> Bro, but the crazy thing, Kentucky's been bottom five in healthcare, education, poverty, and stays for like the last twenty years. And it's just like at a certain point, bro, like you gotta educate yourself. And really, bro, like that's all it comes down to, bro. It's just education. do your own research, bro, and not even come to politics, bro. Do your research on just shit that you like. Just do sh like find shit that you like, research it, bro. And I'm telling you, your life is gonna be a hundred percent better, bro. No matter what, just find out what you love research it quit your job and just go for it bro just You're do feeling. it because at the end of the day bro when you die it's only you in the casket like don't have regrets well as we are spoken right there you feel me yeah bro well, my man sent you in right there man. facts bro remember that bro <laughs> man, welcome back to the super clutch podcast so man let's 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 uh, go back let's go into some music man so you love music who yo What's your top five artists? I like to ask everybody that to get that perspective. Bro, I'm a big future. Woo! I'm a big Uzi. Okay. But see, I like to break future into two artists because you got future, then you got Hendrix, though. So, like, but I'm going to conclude them as one. I future at all facets. Like, it ain't no way that people can say he, he can't rap like he's yeah, supposed to. Yeah, bro, exactly. So, I got future. I got Uzi. Um, I'm really. I like Joey Badass. I don't know if I put him in my top five, but he's definitely on the cusp at least. No, I like Joey Badass. And then I probably too. say right now, I'm fucking with Lil Spig from Cincy, bro. Shout out Lil Spig, blowing up. And You ever interview him? Nah, not yet. But I've talked to him a couple times. He's just in Cali right now working Paramount Studios, doing his thing. Oh, yeah, the studio? Yeah, bro. So shout out him. Um, damn, bro. Who else? I like Kanye, bro. I can't lie. I like... Older Kanye though, I, I, I like Kanye as a musical artist. That's it. Like, nah, I rock with Kanye. I just you just gotta take the bad with the good. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> I like him musically. I can't hold him, bro. But yeah, so I definitely say Future, Uzi, Kanye, Lil Spig right now, and then I'll probably finish that off with. Damn, bro. Like, listening to hold on. So you said Future, Uzi, Lil Spig, Kanye. <sighs> Damn, that's a tough one, bro. Fuck, I think I'd have to go with Brent Fires, bro. I've been fucking with Brent heavy lately. Boy, so you, I'm trying, you ain't named no white artist or nothing. I'm nah, trying. I mean, I like a white artist, <laughs> but I mean, like, I just this be vibing is, this, with everything. This is incredible. This is the first time ever I ever seen this. <laughs> but it's all I mean, good. I like white artists, but it's like, I mean, I like Ed Sheeran, but it's not like I'm just going to, like, vibe to Ed Sheeran. Shit, I, what? what? I like Ed Sheeran, don't get me wrong, but, like. I don't even, I can't remember the last Ed Sheeran song, but I don't got And, like, there ain't, I like Post Malone, but, like, he ain't, like, 
Charlamagne top made five. me not like him. Really? Yeah, Charlamagne <laughs> just said some perfect shit, man. <laughs> he said that nigga is mayonnaise. Uh, it fucked me up, but I understood it. <laughs> but but yeah. not Post Malone heart. Post Malone, he's like just one of those artists, bro, who can just range it, bro. Like singing to rapping and, you know, rapping being. That's how I big. got hooked to him, bro, on that White Iverson. He killed me. I was like, damn. Yeah, bro, and he just. He understands who he is personality-wise. You know what I mean? And I feel like him doing that, like, being all about, like, drinking Bud Light and, like, chain-smoking cigarettes, like, that appeals to people because, like, that's it's just different. you. Yeah. And it's not, like, smoking cigarettes is, like, whatever, bro, but it's, like, the fact that you're just, like, yeah, like, this is who I am. Like, people love that shit. That's why he's probably top five biggest artists in the world. Probably. I don't know the logistics, though. He probably is. I mean, you got Drake. You got Ariana Grande, BTS. BTS is wild. And then they got some new K-pop group out of uh, South Korea that's, like, the number one, like, new A kid the pop group? Nah, they, like, it's, like, a f- all-female pop group. I don't know their name, but it's, like, eight of them, and they're basically, like, number one in the world. They got the number one album. Hey, that's fire. That's fire, bro. But, yeah, so I'm pretty wide range on the music, bro. I'm, I'm pretty out there. I feel it. So, like, give me one of your old, for, like, who, 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 who one of your, like, Lifelong, one of your favorite artists. You younger than me, so this Life gonna be long, some bro. shit. Damn. You I fuck s- with Bruno Mars, bro. Lifelong, right. bro. Bruno okay. Mars, lifelong. I fuck with Bruno, boy. He said, uh, man, bro, he, I, bro, I had to let one girl go because one of his songs. He told me the truth, <laughs> bro. Uh, Bro, and he's just dope, bro, because in concerts, he plays, like, all the instruments. Yeah. And, like, that's just cool, bro. And, like, he just seems like a really just vibed out guy. I don't know. I just, he's on my list of celebrities so I would hang out with. Bro, I can't remember where what that song is called. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Made you break up with your girl. Bro, I ain't, we was already broken up. I just had to give it back to the streets, man. <laughs> Uh, after Bruno sang that song to me, man, no homo's like this, you know, but yeah. <laughs> man, but yeah. <laughs> so Bruno Mars, I like that, though. Um, yeah, man, so like, you a movie, you like movies? Yeah, bro, I'm a big uh, Leo fan, Tom Hardy guy. Tom Hardy, who is Tom Hardy? Or, er- yeah, yeah, uh, Bane, he played Bane. Oh, okay. Uh, he's dope, he's a good method actor. Like one of them, I like Christian Bale, but and because he Christian Bale is just one of them actors who like he disrespectful because he wasn't even American, like he mean? don't even speak American. That oh, yeah, was he's Batman. like British, right? But, yeah, yeah, he's British. Isn't but, that wild as fuck, man, bro? And you never would have known that shit either. You never known. And, yeah. and it's crazy, bro, because he's one of them dudes who like if he has to be 110 pounds for a character, he'll do it. If he got to be 210 pounds, like he'll do it. And that's just commitment, bro. That's just respect. That's a different type of actor, right there. Yeah, like for you to do that, bro, like you're just. And he plays a crackhead well, bro, and a murderer well, bro. <laughs> he plays crackheads well, murderer as well, bro. He was just... a crackhead. In the yeah, movie. bro, he's been a crackhead in uh the fighter. He was. Uh... Oh yeah, I got a boy. Yeah, bro, he's great. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, my man was a dope head. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, bro, I love him, man. What about you, though? Who you vibe with musically? Uh, right now, I've been, all I've been playing all year is that uh, Lil Wayne, The Funeral. Okay. Yeah, um, that last Juice World album. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but, like, I always love, like, when somebody, I don't love when somebody dies, but, like, when they drop an album or something, mm. I love that last album, like. Yeah, the post humanious album and shit. We, nah, what's that what it's called? I can't remember. It had the, like, pink background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they did that with pop, too. Yeah, see, I, I ain't got into the pop yet. Cause the they, pop's They dope. play it so much. I uh, just like uh, they play the two songs yeah. too much, but the rest of the album, if you go to the deluxe, like fifteen through eighteen, crazy, it's crazy fire, and it's like more like R and B S beats. It's pretty, it's it's a dope like windows down smoking like a joint just by the music. Yeah, I gotta fuck with the. Pop. I fuck with that. With like the Mac Miller. Okay. And his last album, um, Nip, Nipsey. Mm. Like, but I listen like 
I've been listening. I was talking about my little brother. I only listen to like old music for yeah, real. Yeah. I don't really be trying to listen to rap no more. Okay. But as much, I mean, it's a heavy balance because I still got to, you know, mm. know what's going on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just go back. Like, I love James Brown. Um, who else will I mean? That's what we, um, Prince, you know, Michael mm. Jackson. I mean, I'm going back. It'd be Curtis Mayfield. Um, okay. I love Boosie, Boosie Collins, for the musician too. Like I got a bass, but I'm trying to learn this. Okay. Shit. And Boosie, he, he a whole different element, and his little method, I learned it. So. Okay. Definitely shout out. Sure, you on the way then to playing it? Yeah, I just got to get my get it fixed. I done broke the string the other day. Damn. That's Bro- tough. Man, <laughs> sorry, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't really say it's my favorite. My favorite artist is Wiz Khalifa. Okay. But like, I don't know. I fuck with all the artists in Cincinnati. Every single one of them. Can't say I don't. You feel me? I fuck with every single one. Who would you want to work with? I don't know. If I could, though, like pick one. Mm. You definitely want to. I seen Jay Guts. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I seen him. I told him I want to work with him, but you probably don't remember. But either him or Atlanta Turner. Okay. I feel like I want to mess with one of them because they, they'll be rapping about the same stuff I'll be rapping about, mm-hmm. I feel like. If not somewhere around that range. But that's probably who. I mean, but everybody, you know, I'm probably missing out on people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, or, you know, the younger artists. I've I done already been in the studio with a lot of them, though, so. You know what's up. You feel me? But yeah, man. Definitely trying to work with everybody, though. You see me with my boy Sinji right now. You feel me? Man, shit. Man. Well, what kind of, like, what, what podcast do you watch? You watch any podcasts? Oh, uh, bro. Uh, yeah, I listen to Market Manager. I listen to basically. See, like, it's different. I ain't never heard of Market Manager. You yeah, feel I me? listen to. No stupid questions. I listen to Hidden Brain. I listen to a lot of psychological shit and just like recent studies. Cause I just like learning about like human interactions. Cause like realistically, bro, like a lot of the shit your parents told you just isn't real. Like it's yeah. just like not. And like it's proven by like studies and shit. So like I just like to sit down and just learn about people and like different like business deals and just like shady shit and just like not that they mean it to be wrong but they like, just be scared like, like they just don't actually know like a lot of the shit that they were taught is wrong yeah. so like they think it's right but it's like i don't know i just like listening to just like how different studies show that like different things like this one i just listened to basically talked about how noise was about sound and like how there's a difference between sound and noise like noise is something that affects you and sound is something that you make basically and how like they took the school in brooklyn and one classroom of the school was next to a train it was basically loud and the other classroom wasn't and basically from a fourth to a sixth grade in that classroom the kids who were by the noisy train were a full year behind learning class and basically they took those kids and then obviously with restraints to the study like they didn't necessarily get a random choose but they took those kids and put them in the quiet classroom, and then they had the exact same grades. And nothing changed. The teachers and everything were the same, but it was the noise. And based on, like, shit like that, like, it's just super interesting to me. No, that's, that's deep. What right about there. you, though? What you be, you listen to podcasts? What you listen yeah, to? Yeah, see, I'm different. I'll be watching 85 South Show. Okay. That's my shit. Uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game. Um, Drink Champs. Okay. Uh, I ain't heard of that one. That's with Nori. He a rapper. Okay. And he's like older though, he's from New York. Um, he yeah, he hosted with a DJ, whatever. They be having mm-hmm. all the uh, older rappers, not older, but you know the legends, the icons. Yeah. They be having them come on there. But um, all the smoke. Uh, Shay Sharp podcast. I'm trying to think. Of all of them. I'm trying to get my plugs out right now. You know what I mean. Queen City, you feel me? Hey, hey, much love. Appreciate that. <laughs> you feel me? But yeah, that's that's about it right there, for real, for real. But I try to, I need to watch more. I mean, they mm. definitely available, and you know, I'm I got a podcast. You got a podcast, so yeah. you know what I mean. Then it's dope, man. Especially podcasts, anybody can listen. I was looking at like our user base, and we have people like from 
uh, Singapore, Russia, uh, Australia, and I was like, yo, like, that's some crazy shit to really just think about, like, somebody in some fucking different just country is just, like, Man, listening to that I shit. just had like seven plays. It was like it's a uh, humble seven yeah, plays. Yeah, no, but, but it's like it dope, bro. Because you gotta start like, from somewhere. You know what I mean, bro? Like nobody just does one and gets famous, bro. Like no. that shit don't happen. And that shit's dope, bro. When I saw like I had somebody like in just those countries, I was like, whoa. Man, my shit was in Japan. They playing it in Korea, like what? Like that's just dope, bro. Just like even realize that it's like damn, like I don't even need to necessarily be popular here, like. Facts. I can be popular anywhere in the fucking world, bro, and be set. Facts. I definitely relate to that, man, because I was like, damn, Japan? Yeah. That's f- dope as fuck, yeah, bro. Yeah, fuck with that, for sure, man. But, um, you say you like basketball, right? What's yeah. your team, man? I'm Play a Cavs fan. I've always been a Cavs fan, so. Just the Cavs without me. Brian? I've, all, I've been there even without Brian. I'm still oh, there. <laughs> But see, like, I'm a LeBron fan. Like, I like him on the late. I don't like the Lakers. I just like LeBron. So, like, in turn, I have to like the Lakers. But, like, Cleveland's my team. So, I've been there. I'm still there. So, y'all can't even come for me about the LeBron (laughs) shit. Y'all can't even do that to me. Nah, I I like Brian. My favorite player, Kobe, so. Okay, I respect. I don't even be watching basketball no more. Brian's a GOAT, though, bro. Yeah, Brian. And I'll fight anybody on that, bro. Brian is the GOAT. He definitely the GOAT. I don't like that they be leaving. Yeah, I don't like that they be leaving Brian out. I mean, Kobe out, bro. Yeah, Kobe top three. They be saying, like, it's just MJ and Brian. Hell nah. Hell nah. I think I, my personal belief is that, like, if you take everything into consideration, that I would just say Wilt Chamberlain. Because I just feel like Wilt Chamberlain just put up stupid numbers in that. And no matter game he played nah, in, bro. Will Chamberlain was 7-11 out there, bro. Bro, oh, hold on. I got the stats on Will Chamberlain, bro. Because somebody tweeted some shit about Will Chamberlain being like, oh, bro, Will Chamberlain was 7-1, ran a 4-6, 48-inch verdict and bench 500 pounds. Bro, like, that's like that's like a god, bro. Like, you know yeah. what I mean, bro? He is. I think Will though. Chamberlain would be the greatest player if you really just took You think he would take Shaq, though? I think he would body sh- Bro, if he could bench 500 pounds and jump 48 inches a 7-1, bro, I think he could manage Shaq, bro. I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Shaq out there, but, like, Will Shaq Chamberlain, I feel like. But, like, yeah, Shaq, and Will handle Bill, too. Like, Will was getting 60 and 50 points off Bill, and Bill is considered a defensive player. He ain't Shaq. I don't know, bro. <laughs> he ain't Shaq. I think Will would dominate. I think Will would beat Shaq, but I think it would be close. But I think Will would beat Shaq. Oh, I don't know. That's like, and Will has the ultimate game-changing title of everybody knows it. I don't even need to say If you know anything about Will, you know what I'm talking about. Facts. <laughs> Shout out Will, man. But yeah, man. Oh, shit, I'm trying to see. Yeah, man, I'm hurt because I don't think Shaq will, a body will, man. I mean, Shaq will, <laughs> Shaq will turn around and bang on him, bro. I know, bro, but I just feel like Will. I, I would just want to see what, like, a Will version of today would just look like. Like, I don't want to necessarily see him play. I would, like, someone just that, like, I would just be yeah. like, holy shit, bro. Like, that would be like Giannis if Giannis had, like, I don't even know. Like, I feel like if Giannis was just, like, just need to know how to shoot. bigger. Yeah, I think he's gone. I think Giannis goes to Golden State. I am a firm believer Damn. in that. I think that they trade the two pick Andrew Wiggins and some other shit person for Wiggins a bomb, huh? Yeah, bro. But I don't think Giannis wants to stay in Milwaukee. So no, nah. there ain't no reason to. Like Milwaukee, I mean, you could play that, but it's like, yeah, bro, he wants to go live in Miami though. Like he's an international star. He's from Greece. He's got to go to a big city. Conquer that, bro. Because there's a difference in U.S. fame and world fame. You need to come to L.A. I don't think they can manage that, though. What? I think he'll either be Golden State just because they have the trades they can make happen or Miami. Because I think he definitely would like to play with Jimmy Butler. Uh, I don't think he's going to Miami. Oh, Pat Riley, Pat Riley, make a phone call. Pat Riley might be able to. I like to, the bro. go. That Golden State probably the best thing. I don't know. If they get go, if they get Giannis, bro, LeBron, like I love LeBron, but he's just retired, bro, because people are gonna Brian, be like, Brian, the man, Brian, bro, he could have oh, beat them. Dear. I love Brian, but he, him and AD could have handled those, because it's like you could stop Giannis, bro, but it's a fact that as soon as he passes it out, yeah. it's probably gonna be a May three, no matter what. So it's like hero, yeah, hero's so, cool, bro, but. I think that he gets traded. He's going to be traded. 
So he, uh, he, uh, if he he's gonna be traded for Giannis, I think if Giannis goes to Miami. Man, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he probably is, but Giannis a three. That's gonna be Jimmy Butler's spot. Fuck you, bro. Giannis, I job, bro. He can play whatever, bro. Hey, Jimmy Buckets, get his name Jimmy Buckets. It ain't even Butler no more. Hey, Jimmy Buckets is dope, bro. But Jimmy Buckets knows he needs somebody else. That type he shit. did like he. I don't want to even say he pulled an AI comparison because I definitely feel like AI carried a worser team. Man, AI ain't had nobody. And yeah, bro, Jimmy Butler did great, but he also he's smart enough to know that like you ain't winning in the NBA alone, bro. Fact. Especially now. you got Golden State coming back with Clay, Steph, and Draymond. They gonna be tough. You got Denver who is tough. You gonna have fucking team, yeah, bro. So it's like I wonder where Westbrook about to go. Bro, I don't think nobody wants him, bro. I was telling my brother that I was like this man trash. He was missing. It's just layups. like when you put it into the perspective can't shoot. of financially, if you'd want to pay someone a hundred and thirty million dollars over three years, and he's and you know, like I like Westbrook, bro, but he's not winning you the title by himself. So nah. it's really and it's just financially, bro, I don't think anyone bites that bullet. If he could shoot, I'll fuck with him, but he can't even shoot. Yeah, bro, and it's just like I don't think that he's a he gets you a championship ring as a one or two player. I think that if he's the three, you can. But if he's a one or two, I just don't think that. I don't even know who will play over. with him because, bro, he be out there running. You yeah, really? and, like, that's the thing. It's, like, people talk about the Clippers. Like, there's no way Kawhi Leonard wants to play with Russell Westbrook. You are not going <laughs> to convince me at all that he wants that shit to happen. No, I don't and know. And I don't, I don't see it in Brooklyn, bro, because KD and Kyrie – I don't think they Kyrie need the ball, gonna, bro. Like, I don't think he gonna be in Brooklyn. What you mean? I don't think he gonna be out there. Who? Kyrie. He done been out there for like two, three years. He already man. out there, bro. But he about to be. He's now with KD coming back. They gonna be set. Yeah. He didn't want to play last year because KD wasn't playing. No, nah, I, I, I fuck with Kyrie. He didn't want to play because the pandemic. Yeah, bro. I wouldn't risk that. I wouldn't know if either, especially NBA, all that money's guaranteed anyway. And so then like, all the shit that was going on around that time, too. Yeah. I would have just sat, sat out. I respect the, yeah, I would have too. But I mean, I don't know. They did that shit, fucking. Got the ring. LeBron got four now. You feel me? If he gets five, don't let him get six either, bro. Because yeah. if he gets six, it's over. Jordan fans. He can do it too, bro. I can do good, it. bro. They he got AD get, for two more years, bro. He can get bro. three more. And they just got Dennis Schroeder. Oh, shit, I fuck with Schroeder. So they'll be set, bro. So where do you want this to lead to for you personally? Um, Just paving the way, you know what I mean? Showing people that you ain't just got to do one thing. Mm. You know what I mean? You can rap, you can sing, dance, you know what I mean? You can do, you can create however you want to create, you know what I mean? And there ain't no limit to it. Just because you do one thing don't mean you can't do that, you know what I mean? And, <clears throat> they show people to work together for real. Like it, it really ain't really about me. It's just really to show people that you know what I mean. You can get out here and you can do what you want to do. You mm. know what I mean. And once you do that, more stuff gonna come to add on. Is what you gotta do. You know what I mean. It's, it's definitely a big responsibility to be doing this, but you know what I mean. Like you can do it, and that's really my main thing with it for real. I mean for myself. Music just be therapy, and everything else just come with the music, so um, I ain't really got no intentions, but just to, you know, express myself, you feel me, and hope it can uplift the next person who hear it, but overall, just to show people, you know what I mean, you can get out here, you can do it, you feel me, regardless of what situation, what impediment, whatever, you know what I mean. Respect. I feel so, what are you going to do with your first million dollars? Oh. Uh, my first million, I'm going to pay taxes because they're going to take half of that. <laughs> that's probably why I'm doing my first million. Nah, bro. This is first <laughs> million. You just get a spin, bro. Like, nah, I ain't going to spend it. You ain't going to spend it. Now, why not, bro? You get to, though. Like, you already paid your taxes, bro. What you going to oh, do Oh, if I already paid my yeah, taxes. Yeah, bro. So you just get a free spin. Oh, I'm I'm gonna buy like a warehouse or something, like a, a big place, a big space, and I'm gonna have my my own production like space. You feel mm. me? That's what I'll do. So where like you want to keep it here? You wanna? I would want to keep it here. Um, definitely would like to keep it here, but I don't know. Georgia, yeah. New York, if uh, if not here. Mm. 
Interesting. Okay. You know what I mean? But that's what I do my first million. I need a whole walking production system. You feel me? Ooh, I like that. Yeah. What about you, though? What you going to do with your first million? Bro, I would... I ain't even gonna cap to you. I would just buy a plane ticket and bounce for like four months and just live very, very like below the means. But which sounds like really weird, but like I would just like travel. It just sounds like you're gonna go out the US. That's yeah, all. facts. I'm just gonna go out the US, bro. Like, and not travel like touristy. I'm just gonna travel like real, like culturally, like tried. Like if I would live there type shit. You're going to go to the tribes and the villages, bro, I, huh? Yeah, bro. Like, I would like to do that <laughs> shit. Like, hike, like, fucking, like, Mount Kilimanjaro and, like, different mountains and, like, fucking just going to, like, random small towns in, like, Greece or, like, some stupid shit. Nah, and it's vibing. Dope. And then I buy an Aston Martin because that's my, that's a car that was, like. Yeah, I'll be seeing them out, out that way, too, man. Uh, um, Mount Washington. Yeah, we got, there's uh, three dudes. There's a black one. There's a silver one. There's a convertible white one. Yeah, I think I'll be watching black them. One. Yeah. So, um, what's your favorite thing about women, man? That's one of my segments. It usually be black women, but I don't know if you into that. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't discriminate. Okay. But yeah, uh, about women, you know. Bro, it's just got to be, like, the mental connection, not, like, the emotional, bro. Because, like, I feel like emotionally, like, it is what it is, bro. People get connected to more the more time they just spend with someone. So, like, new, naturally, your human body's just going to be like that. But it's, like, mentally, bro, like, you just, I got to under, like, I just, because, like, like I said, bro, like, I'm into weird shit, like, markets and stuff. So, like, not even that you got to understand it, but if you are, like, oh, like, that's interesting and just, like, mentally, there's, that's all, bro. That's what I really need. No, I feel it's it. just mental capacity. I feel it, man. <laughs> I ain't mad at that, though. That ain't, that ain't a hard bargain, man. Yeah, bro, I'm a chill dude, bro. Don't don't trip. Like, like I just it's just nothing worse. I'm just like women, bro. But in general, if you're talking with someone, bro, and like you could tell like on their face they confused, and you're just like, yeah, damn, like this is so awkward for me. Like, yeah. it, it, like just want somebody that get it. You feel me? Yeah, bro. And I have a dark sense of humor, so like that's also a thing. Not like regular white people they're like i have a dark sense of humor and they're just like racist and they think that's dark humor but it's not but like i just i say some just like really like weird like dark jokes and like you know like that's kind of hard for people to like like you know it's like a tough kind of like i like to say i'm a stand-up comedian bro i like to test jokes bro and you know if somebody doesn't like it it is what it is bro but that's how you that's how you become a funny person right you just gotta try different subjects that's how you become uh you know the person you need to be once you're willing to get out there and trash shit man yeah, exactly. And just say fuck it, bro, because who cares? Like, who cares if someone judges you? You feel me? At the end of the day, bro, most people who judge are just people that ain't doing what they wish you could do what you're doing. You feel me? With that, we going to close out. You feel me right there with my boy Sinji, man. Make sure y'all go check out the Queen City Podcast. This is the Super Clutch Podcast with my boy Sinji. We out.